I'm going to try to make this quick just so I don't bore the socks off you. And if anybody wants to watch me crash and burn, pay very close attention. So, you know, there are a lot of people out there who, for a variety of reasons, are interested and even eager to start using open source. But they aren't able or willing to make that leap. And for a variety of reasons, even the most resolute of them hesitate. I'm sure we've all run into that problem before. We've seen why people do that. Now, one of the ill-fitting hats I wear, as Jason mentioned, is technology coach. And in that position, in, in doing that, I help people integrate technologies into their lives and just show them how to use technology to better do their work and best better live their lives. And one of the things I do is actually advise them to use a lot of open source software because I think it's as good, if not better, than a lot of proprietary closed source software. And during my time as a technology coach, I've run into a lot of problems that people have been having. And I'd like to share some of the things that I've learned as a coach that can help you ease other people into open source software. Now, I, I think um, the first desire is just to toss people into the deep end and let them try to swim. That's how a lot of us learned about open source. We grabbed an installer package, a Linux Live USB or CD, and then just, just went to town. And we learned a lot that way. But for most people, that doesn't work. What you wind up with is a lot of whiny, fussy people. They get frustrated, they get annoyed, they get angry, and they just decide, nope, this open source thing isn't for me. And that's not the result that we want, is it? So there are a lot of things you can do. First off, try to curb your urge to get up on your soapbox and you know, preach the open source way. It rarely works. I mean, to be honest, most people don't really care about the four freedoms, about the moral and ethical issues around open source or the moral or ethical reasons of why you should use that. At least they don't at the beginning. Preaching to them will bore their socks off. Instead, go for the heart of it. Show them they're what they're interested in. And what they're interested in is what open source can do for them. So show them what it can do for them, how they can do their work with it. You know, somebody actually said this to me recently. He said, I'm afraid of open source because I can't program. And there's a perception out there, I think we've all run into it, that open source is for the developer, the techie, the sysadmin. That's not true. I mean, I have almost zero technical skills, and I live my life in open source. So, you know, you've got to explain to people that, you know, they don't need to code. They don't need to script. They don't need to tweak configuration files or use the command line to use open source. Now, if they want to learn to do that, it's there. I mean, that's one of the great things. And I think that's a very powerful thing. Then people say, but it's not. And when I say that, I mean, but it's not a Mac. It's not Windows. It's not Microsoft Office. <laughs> people are making that comparison. Uh, because, and implying, actually stating very strongly that open source doesn't have the same merit, the same value as closed proprietary software does. I think that's wrong. And the answer I always give them is, so what? So what if it's not Word? So what if it's not Mac OS? So what if it's not Windows? Open source software is as strong, if not stronger, than most closed and proprietary packages. You just have to demonstrate that. But don't go into feature by feature comparisons between closed and open <laughs> source software, because that's just going to bore people's socks off. A lot of people aren't really interested in that sort of thing. What you should do instead is teach them, guide them, show them what they can do with this sort of thing. Show, take a look at what tasks they're doing at the moment with their word processor, with their graphics package, and start introducing them to, how, to the ways to do that with their open source package. And open source, and I think you should remind them that open source and free software has a price. It's not a monetary price. You can't put a big price tag on it. But the price comes in the form of time. Time they have to spend to adapt to the new software, to learn new ways of doing things to build new habits and to build the discipline to use this software regularly. It takes a little time, but it's time very well spent. And what you really need to do is start them off taking baby steps. Don't throw them in saying, hey, here's the, here's the GIMP, here's everything you can do with it. That's just going to overwhelm them. Instead, look, again, as I said earlier, look at the way in which they use software now. Show them, for example, how to build a document template in LibreOffice Writer. Show them how to crop an image in the GIMP. Show them how to import uh, photos from their camera using Digicam. Show them how to use GNUmeric to create a household spreadsheet. And then slowly build up on that. 
once they have the basics, they're going to be they're going to want to learn more advanced topics, or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be just very happy with what they're doing, and they won't have to worry about you know regularly paying licensing fees for their software. And in the end, if I, th I think, and I've seen this happen, if you get more people interested in open source software, get them slowly using it, slowly building up their confidence and their abilities with it, you'll not only get very happy users, you might find one, two, three, maybe half a dozen or more who actually will champion open source. They'll go out there, they'll spread the word, do it quite loudly, and it'll be better for the community. You'll get wider, you'll, maybe you'll get a wider user base, and in the end, it's just open source will win. Thank you. <laughs>